hey guys welcome back to my channel it's abiba here and today i am back with another philosophy and ethics related video so after my first video i got quite a lot of questions about specific topics answering questions structure and i was like okay i'm definitely gonna make more videos regarding this because I had to find my way myself and it'd just be very helpful to help people out there sit in the exam and I can tell exams slash mocks are close by because I get more messages regarding exams now so that just signifies to me that exam season is very close by so let's begin. Today I'm actually going to focus on the teleological argument and the ontological argument. I will do a separate video for the ontological argument just because I do feel like it does take a while longer to understand the ontological argument as it is a bit like tricky to get but the teleological argument is a lot more straightforward and easier to understand so i was asked a question i would put the question below here and a girl asked me this question and i just thought it was such a good question because in a way it encompasses the free arguments but then it's asking you to argue which is better a priori or a posteriori so post experience or before experience and that way you'd have to draw upon knowledge from these three different topics and i was like that's actually quite a good one and if you don't have really in-depth knowledge or how to analyze properly you just wouldn't know so i just thought i'd do i jump straight in and just start with the teleological argument and then move on to the ontological argument so yes let's begin so what is the teleological argument the teleological argument is the design argument so it aims to explain the existence of god by looking at empirical things we can observe in our environment in our world to then conclude that there is a creator there is a god so the first person who begins this argument is william paley so paley comes in with his watch analogy so in paley's watch analogy he explains that you're walking you're walking up on a heath and then you stumble across a watch and he says you don't just conclude that the watch came from anywhere you see that the watch you see the intricate aspects of the watch and you conclude that the watch must have a maker the things the cogs and screws in the work watch they work towards the purpose that tell us of telling time just as the fins on in a, on a fish what work towards the talus of swimming just as the eye work towards the talus of seeing things in our world have talus and they have talus because like the watch has a watchmaker these things have makers as well and paley's argument then concludes that from this observation in a watch as we see there is a watchmaker he concludes that there must be a designer and that designer is god and that is his argument. Observations, consistency in the world, pattern, order, and things work intricately like the watch. Conclusion, a creator, a designer, and that designer, God. Perfect. So then, this kind of shows in Aquinas' argument. Aquinas' argument comes before Paley's argument, but it kind of goes along that same similar line. Like Paley, Aquinas also concludes that there is a creator. So Aquinas then um, begins by saying, you have an archer and an arrow. Archer controls the arrow. And the arrow is an inanimate object, just as things in our world are inanimate. But the arrow still reaches the end result, the talus. It hits the bullseye. So like the inanimate object, which is the arrow, things in our world are very much an animate object. They have no life, they have no intelligence, but they still reach the talus, they still serve a purpose. Just as the sun rises and goes back down, at that same time, every single time, every single, every single day, it happens, there is order. Things go across a specific observable pattern that we see. So this is like the core of the teleological argument. Order, pattern, consistency, qua regularity, qua purpose, things work towards a purpose in our world. So the teleological argument in essence does conclude that there is a creator, there is a God. And I know immediately there's so much objections, like so much people would object all these principles already, like, okay, does this then conclude that this God, this creator, is it the um, Christian creator? Is it a Muslim creator? Is it the Buddhist creator? We don't get any sense at all. But in its core, the teleological argument 
just shows that order in our world, regularity in our world, the beauty in our world, the intricacies in our world, they are too perfect, they are too in place. The earth is placed at just the right angle, at just the right turn, like just the right area away from the sun to give life to us. These intricacies can't just come by chance. There must be a creator. And that is what the teleological argument tries to get at its core. So this then therefore concludes that the teleological argument is an inductive argument induces from observation. And it's also a posteriori argument, which means it's post experience. After seeing all this order and regularity in our world, we then conclude that this proves the existence of God. So that is it at its basic tenant. So my favorite part, the objections. So much people have objected the teleological argument, the cosmological argument, just simply because from science, you have from just like common sense, some people literally say it's a leap of logic. And one of the biggest critique, which I think you should definitely focus on is David Hume. David Hume, critiques the, um, the technological argument very, very hugely. And also um, Richard Swinburne, of course, Richard Swinburne is, is um, objections can be used in the teleological argument and the um, cosmological argument because it is still argument from observation. So one main point, I'm not, I can't go through all the objections, of course, but I would go through the ones that really stood out to me and the ones I built it upon. So it's the fact that John Stuart Mill, he, objects that nature kills. Much as Paley and Aquinas do talk about this beauty, this intricacy, the complexity of our world as we see in the eyes, nature does kill. This argument takes a stance from evil. You might have learned from the topic evil. Nature does kill. As much as there is order in the world, there is also disorder in the world as well. So disorder that we might observe might just be from one perspective. Someone else would literally observe this order in the world and then conclude that empirical evidence does not show that God exists. So a really good like current example that you could use might be global warming, literally the earth warming up, greenhouse effect, things are happening. The world is really quickly changing, like things are melting. This is not order. This isn't things that we see that show beauty or like that show that, that point to in an existing God. Does this then mean that the designer or the watchmaker, is he blind? Can he, he, did he create it perfectly? Or maybe it was just by chance. Really critiquing, really, really critiquing. There's no point in having loads of argument. If you have four or five points and you really want to critique it, you need to go in depth and really critique it and show, does this prove the existence of God? Is not even, it doesn't necessarily have to say, oh, God exists or not. But it's just showing that their arguments are quite, they're quite reductive in, in the terms that they take just one specific stance and saying there's order in the world. But on a larger scale, we can see there is disorder in the world. Disorder, there's evidence of disorder in the world. So that is one, I think, is a, quite a really strong point. And of course, we have um, David Hume. David Hume makes a really good um makes a really good objection, which I personally really like. He says, we have experience of watchmaking. Yes, we know that watches have watchmakers. We definitely do know this, but we have no experience of world making. To then go from that analogy of knowing how a watch is made, to then jump, literally, it's a leap of logic, to saying the world must have a creator is very, very flawed. And you can't, for him, you just simply can't make that jump because we have experience of watchmaking, but we do not have experience of world making. So that logic is simply flawed. And this does make sense. This does make sense. Like those jumps like that, are they allowed? Even the, the basic fact that it's an analogy, an analogy of a watch, an analogy of an arrow, they simply, I find them personally, I find it very, very reductive. As much as empirical evidence show us proof right in our face, we just have, they're just reductive in the sense that the world is more complex than a watch and it's just incomparable. As much as it is to explain our world, some people would critique it for being very anthropomorphic. I'll put that word here. Some people would really critique it for being anthropomorphic because there really is nothing that we can compare our world to. Even if there is a creator, we can't then 
use it to, we can't compare it to flawed human creators and that as well is a very very big objection and the juicy part comes in we have Dawkins so Dawkins takes like a very like biological approach in his critique and he literally says like bro there's no there's no creator like literally it's just evolution as we can see from Darwin's um explanation of people coming from this um Homo, um, Homo sapien, Homo erectus, to just becoming human, is saying no purpose is made, rather as humans, we are evolving. It's the process of natural selection that is making us live. It's not just creation for purpose, no. It's just natural selection. And then this, it makes a quite a valid point through the complexity of the eye. It says, we see the eye as it is now and then just conclude that it serves the purpose of seeing but it's like like evolution the eye has evolved through different stages to then reach the purpose of seeing so for him that conclusion that aquinas and paley comes to is also very very flawed but a good one is fr tenant so fr tenant basically argues he's saying that maybe is this divine creator, this divine watchmaker that made the process of evolution. He's made these processes in place for us to reach our talus. Maybe it does make sense. Maybe you can have that evolutionary approach and still believe in God and still believe there is a purpose and still believe empirical evidence. Things does work towards an end, which is a really good strength of the theological argument. The fact that we can just see things and observe things and then come to a conclusion is very, very good because the ontological argument does not provide this. As humans seeing things, it gives us a sort of reassurance, the observable empirical evidence, and that just gives us like a very solid explanation. And I hope you can see what I've done there, how I've fed from the ontological argument into the teleological argument to make my critique always make links across all the topics because they really really help in answering your question and there's so much critiques of the teleological argument out there from nature kills darwin's biology to empirical evidence being good there are loads and loads just find the evaluations and the criticisms that really work for you and ones that you can really get into and really evaluate to answer the question and i'll be doing another session soon on answering multiple questions so if you do have more questions just literally drop them below i will try my absolute best to answer them and good luck in your mocks and your upcoming mocks and yeah thank you very much for sending in this question my next video should be on the ontological argument where I try to explain the existence of God through reasoning rather than empirical evidence. So thank you. And yeah, another quick one. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I was genuinely overwhelmed by the level of interest people actually had in my philosophy videos. So I genuinely enjoyed philosophy and I was very surprised by the level of like interest that other people actually had. So I'm glad you find them helpful. I really, really enjoy doing these videos and I'd just like to share more. So yeah, thanks.